All right, in this video, we're gonna be talking about knots between your shoulder blades. So your knots might be anywhere along here. They might be anywhere along here, not directly on the spine, but to the side of the spine towards the shoulder blades. You probably feel that gnawing, aching, irritating sensation quite often, and it's probably worse on one side than the other. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what you can do about it. I'm gonna cover some of the common things that you might try that will be totally free, so you don't have to pay somebody for a massage. And I'm gonna talk about what you can do if you've already been doing the common strategies and they aren't working, and you know if you've been paying for a massage for years and years and years to get rid of those knots that never go away, I'll explain what to do about that as well. So as we go through this video, pay close attention, get ready to think right, move right, and feel right. By the end of this video, you are gonna understand how to fix those knots between your shoulder blades. So first things first, we're gonna take a massage ball. Sometimes this is all we need. This is a simple lacrosse ball. You can start off with a tennis ball if the lacrosse ball feels too hard. And I would not recommend you start with a golf ball because that's the worst. It is super hard and heavy. So all you need to do is take this, put it onto the wall, and then you're gonna massage those areas where you actually feel the knots. You're just looking to put pressure into the muscles that feel a little knotty. Okay, so with these knots between your shoulder blades, sometimes those muscles can kind of get stiff and frozen in place. They'll just feel like they don't move well. And just rolling over them with a ball can be super helpful. It just unlocks some range of motion. What you can do is just lean into the wall. The more you push your feet away from the wall and then push back into the wall, the harder you're gonna be pushing into that ball. So adjust you should still be able to breathe <sighs> fairly normally, okay? It's gonna be kind of intense, that's totally okay, but just make sure you're not going so intense that you have to tense up and then you can't breathe, okay? So that's what we do on one side. You can just check what it feels like after you've done that. A lot of times you'll notice that your ability to recruit the muscles there actually improves after you massage that area. So you can just do one side and then compare it to the other side. At the very least, your sense of those muscles is probably gonna improve. Your proprioception is gonna improve. Okay, so you've done one side, ah, uh, that feels better. Go ahead and do the other side. And you know, obviously if this is a one-sided issue, you can go ahead and just do that one side. Now the thing with massage and knots between your shoulder blades is that it doesn't always work, okay? So sometimes people get trapped in this idea of, well, I'm doing this massage stuff, I'm doing a lot of it. It helped initially, maybe I should just keep doing more and more and more of it, and that'll just make the problem go away. Maybe if I just push harder and harder and harder, maybe I'll do what Matt says and just like really jam into the wall. And for some reason, the pain stays, those knots stay. And let's be clear, I'm not telling you to jam as hard as possible. All I want you to do is get in there, let those muscles relax around the ball, feel those muscles relax and lengthen, and that's it. The harder you push, it's not gonna fix it, right? If you just push super hard into any part of your body hard enough, it's gonna hurt, right? And that's not what we're looking for. We're actually looking for functional improvement. So don't just, go pressure, 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 hard, 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 okay? So if you're doing all this massage and those knots are not going away, then you want to be thinking about this strategy instead. That strategy, if you've been watching my channel before, is to build strength. So muscles that get weak, that are underused, that are atrophied, will often complain, okay? Just imagine what happens when you are lying in bed for a week, your body, doesn't feel good because it's been resting and relaxed. Your muscles ache. Your whole body starts to feel like garbage because you are not moving. That happens on a global scale, but that's also happening on a local scale, right? So if you immobilize any joint, or you're immobilizing the muscles around that joint and those muscles will atrophy and ache. So for a lot of us, we spend a lot of time sitting at computers, often with this rounded back, position, this hunchback position. So our shoulder blades are resting a little bit away from our spines and just hanging out in that same position. Even if you sit with good posture and your shoulder blades are resting in a, a little bit better alignment with your spine, they're still 
not having to do any work. Like the rhomboids, the middle traps, none of those muscles are working. So all they're doing is sitting around and atrophying. So the solution isn't just to keep massaging those weak muscles. The solution is actually to start using those muscles. So let's talk about how to do that. You don't need any equipment to do this. You're just going to be standing. This is the simplest, easiest thing you can do. You're going to be pulling your shoulder blades together and then relaxing, pulling them together and relaxing, pulling them together and relaxing. As you do this, we do not want you to be throwing your rib cage up. This is called rib flare. It's also creating extension in the lower back and a bit in the mid back. We just want to keep the rib cage here level. Okay. And then we're just moving the shoulder blades together in the back. You can think about those shoulder blades trying to kiss each other. Just saying, Hey buddy. Hey buddy. I missed you. I missed you. This is a motion that a lot of people are lacking. So if you can just start practicing this, it's going to help a lot. Now, when you try this, if you're trying it right now, you may notice that one side, probably that side that has more knots feels weird. Like it doesn't feel like you can feel those muscles actually doing anything where the other side feels like it's moving for a lot of people i've noticed over the years it's the right side it's true for me the right side was the one that just kind of felt dead it didn't feel like it could um i could recruit the muscles there it just felt like i wasn't sure if it was moving where the left side i could just feel like oh, okay there those muscles are engaged everything is correct there but the right side was like dead zones just total dead zones and if you feel that, that's okay. That's normal. And what will happen is as you practice this, you're going to start to feel those muscles better. Basically, if you're not actually communicating with those muscles, your brain is no longer as good at feeling what's happening there, right? So you use it or you lose it. And if you use it, you get better at using it. So it's like a win-win, right? Okay. So first exercise you can start doing is just these scapular retractions focus on feeling that clean retraction. And then you're doing that roughly 30 times. Just keep going until you feel either a little bit of fatigue or you just find you're like really bored. Okay. If it feels really easy, that's great. Once you feel like it's really easy, then you can move on to something that's a little bit harder. So we want to make those muscles stronger. We're not just going to say like, oh, okay, well, they work, so they must be strong because I'm just doing this. No, we need to add resistance to this. Now, we're not going to use weight yet. I'm going to keep this simple for you so you don't have to use any equipment. You can just go ahead and fold out at your hips. Now, if you're watching this and you're like, uh, I don't think my hamstrings or my spine can handle that, that's fine. We can just put your butt up against the wall. You can bend your knees and that's fine. And doing this is going to make your back a bit stronger, which is also fine. So you're going to be here. You're hanging. Head and neck are not curled or anything. You're trying to keep your spine in nice alignment. Tuck your chin a little bit. Try to get yourself as parallel to the floor as you can. Pull your shoulder blades together. Bring your arms up and out to the side. Now you have a choice here. You can just hold this for 30 seconds. That's cool. That's a great option. You can also flap your arms, flap your wings for that 30 seconds. That's also great. Okay. You can also do larger wing flaps, nice and slow and controlled, really focusing on feeling the shoulder blades close up in the back as you do this. So that same idea of getting scapular retraction, we want to keep focusing on getting that scapular retraction with this exercise. So around 30 seconds, you can do more. If you feel like you are super strong and you're able to totally cool. We're really just learning to activate these muscles. You're going to feel the mid traps. You'll feel the rhomboids. You're going to feel also the lower traps working. Okay. You want all of those muscles to be working so that you feel, Oh, Oh, what is, what is this? My shoulder blades can retract. Okay. Super easy exercise to do at home. You can do these for two, three sets, and you can even do them throughout the day to help engage those muscles and relieve that gnawing sense of atrophy that's going on in your muscles around your shoulder blades. Now, all that said, you might be thinking, is there anything I can do that'll make me even stronger to try to 
reduce these knots between my shoulder blades? And the answer is a resounding yes. Hey, I wanna take one quick second to say big thanks to Alexis Rupert for her $5 donation and Jody Marshall for her $2, I think Australian dollar donation to the Upright Health channel to support me in what I'm doing here. If you wanna support me too, you can use the thanks button or the PayPal link in the description box down below. Now let's get back to it. That same exercise, you can make that harder by adding some resistance. So I have some little weights. I'm just gonna grab them right here. We can do that exact same exercise with weights and you'll notice I have resistance <laughs> and that's gonna make it harder. You don't have to use heavy weights. Light weights are totally fine and probably the best option, not probably, they are the best option when you first start. So use, those are only, I think maybe a half or a quarter pound each, maybe one or, uh, no, maybe one or two pounds each. And those are enough to just make it a little harder and then you can gradually build that up, okay? The other thing you can do uh, with, with or without that weight is fine, but you can also change up the angle here. So instead of just flapping, we can go into these goalpost rotations or cactus arm rotations, I don't know what you wanna call them. And you can just do these rotations. These are also gonna help build up strength in your muscles, in your mid traps, your rhomboids. It's gonna also get your rear deltoids. It's gonna get some of your rotator cuff. It's gonna be all kinds of goodness. And then you can add in some weight, okay? So just like that. Okay, that's, that exercise can be really helpful for kicking in the lower traps, which will also help anchor your shoulder blades, which will really help all those knots between your shoulder blades, okay? So, to recap, we're talking about starting off here, beginner exercise, then moving to the uh, hinge with a T. If you need help, put your butt on the wall. If you don't need help, go for it. And then we got goalpost arms, cactus arms, I'm doing this really fast, but again, slow, controlled, right? You can hold that end position for 30 seconds or do slow rotations for 30 seconds. And then adding small amounts of weight to those exercises to make things better. Now you can do those exercises basically on a daily basis. Just listen to your body. If you feel like you're getting too sore from doing them, then skip a day, do them less. If you feel like, oh man, this is just like really helping, go ahead, keep going. And if you feel like you're getting a bit sore in muscles from doing all that, then you can go ahead and grab a lacrosse ball and then massage the muscles in there that are getting a bit sore. Again, not going super hard just to hurt yourself, but teaching those muscles to relax gradually, especially if they're already in a sore state. Now, I'm not finished. There's one more thing that can be really helpful for you. And that's actually really building even more scapular control and just strength in pulling. So our daily lives in modern life don't really involve a lot of pulling. A door is usually the only thing we pull and those are not designed to be really hard to open unless you run into one of those really weird giant heavy doors. But those are rare, right? So what can we do to build this pulling strength? Well, we could be picking stuff up, but um, our phones weigh a couple ounces and like we just have keyboards and we don't really need to pick up anything heavy anymore. But what we can do is use weights. So this is something you can do to build strength. Probably one of the simplest, straightforward, most basic, fundamental, uh, weightlifting exercises, which is just a row. So what you're gonna do is have a chair, a bench, even your couch. You're gonna take a weight. If you're at all skittish about this, start light. Go with five pounds, go with 10 pounds, and just get used to the motion. We're gonna go for a relatively high number of repetitions. So we're gonna say 12, okay? Find a weight where you can do 12 comfortably, and you're gonna take that weight. You're gonna have your body bent over, and then you're just going to do a hinge. Uh, sorry, not a hinge, a row. You're gonna be pulling the weight up towards the ceiling, okay? So I want you to notice that as I'm doing this, I'm not turning myself into a hunchback, okay? I'm trying to keep the normal curves of my spine in place. I'm trying to keep my head and neck in line with my spine. 
if it sags or something like this, it's not going to kill me, but it's a really good idea to try to keep those things lined up just as practice since most of the rest of the day we practice this. Okay. Now, one thing to think about when you're doing this, if you want extra work for your scapular retractors is to actually initiate with that shoulder blade motion that we practiced before. So we're pulling the shoulder blade as if that right shoulder blade is trying to go kiss the left shoulder blade. Okay. So it's going up and then pull. Okay. Going up, then pull. All right. So this for a lot of people is really tough. You'll find like, Oh, how do I even engage that? So if you find it hard, you can just practice just here, just up and down. Just do that little bit. And that's totally cool, right? Just practice getting that shoulder blade to go up and down, up and down. And then you can go to the next part if you still feel like you have gas. Okay. So basically do sets of 12 and do two sets on each side. If you have a side that's obviously weaker, then you can do an extra set for that weak side. Now with these rows, when you're starting to get into a challenging weight, it's probably not a good idea to do every day. You should start off. If you're a total beginner, just start off doing them twice a week, Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, Friday, something like that. Just don't do it on back to back days. That's not a good idea. You don't want to cripple yourself with soreness. Okay. So your whole goal here is to gradually build strength. Even if the first time you do it, you, you feel like, well, that was maybe too easy. I'm not so sure. That's fine. The next time you can make it a little heavier, but if you go too hard, too heavy, then what you're going to do is start cheating. You're going to be like, ah, ah, and then you hurt yourself. And if you hurt yourself that way, you have nobody to blame, but yourself. Okay. So recapping, we got those scapular retractions. We've got the bent over flies flapping, then goal posts then you can add weight to your hands to do that. If you want the extra challenge and to build extra strength, those exercises, you can do those every day. You basically can just set a timer for 30 seconds or just do 30 reps, whatever gets you to a nice little fatigue point on those is totally fine. Do them throughout the day as little, little stretch or exercise breaks away from the computer. And then that's it. That's it. You just keep working them, get those muscles stronger. And you should notice that those shoulder, uh, shoulder blade knots go away. And if you want to build more strength so that you don't feel like you have to do those as much, then making sure that you build strength by doing something like rows is going to be really helpful too. Okay. So that is how you get rid of knots between your shoulder blades. If massage is not working, then you've got to start building strength to make sure that those muscles feel healthy and strong again. All right. So if you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit that thanks button down below or use the PayPal link that you'll find in the description box and leave me a tip. I really, really appreciate it. And I promise I will not use your money to buy some bizarre posture harness to keep me in a hunchback posture. And if you don't want to leave me a tip, that's totally fine totally fine. Just hit the like button, share this video, subscribe to this channel with notifications on so you don't miss out on any future videos. And as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't. <laughs>